Hi everyone, Greg from the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. And this is going to be the first look at the Reno Pro from Monport. This laser machine is going to house a 45 watt CO2 laser tube with a work area of 16 by 12 inches. Definitely an upgrade over the K40 style laser machines. The fit and finish of the construction of the machine is excellent. And this is a solid beast of a machine weighing in at just over 67 pounds. The sides and the front are aluminum construction with the back and the underside of the machine being steel construction. While we're on the outside of the machine, I'll take a couple measurements. And in this direction, we get 31 and a half inches wide. And the depth of the machine is going to come in at about 23 inches. And the overall height is just north of 11 inches. Now it's pretty windy out and I just saw the lights flicker. So hopefully the power stays on while I finish the video. <laughs> in about a minute or two, we're going to dive inside of the machine and check out the internals of the machine. But first, let's take a look at everything that is included with the machine. There's a user manual with a nice piece of blue tape down the middle of it. This is that removable packaging tape. Well, it's removable when it's on metal or plastic, but on this matte paper, it tends to stick. So I simply cut it off and I like this nice blue racing stripe down the middle. Moving on, I've got several blades here for the tool bed of the machine. We're going to see in just a couple minutes that the machine also does include a nice honeycomb panel. There's a USB drive with a number of great reference files and including software that we install to get the controller compatible with Lightburn software. We do have semi-automatic focusing on the machine, but they also include a nice manual focus step gauge, a tool set, two rolls of double-sided tape, which is typically used for checking the mirror alignment, and then some test pieces that are actually made off of this exact machine. A cut sample of clear acrylic. This is 14 millimeters thick cut on the Rito machine with that 45 watt laser tube. A quick adjust tool for adjusting the height of the laser machine bed. There's two hose clamps. There's only one right here because the other one is installed on the back of the machine with the included exhaust hose. A USB cable. A water pump and safety glasses. For this video, I have the Monport CW5200 Active Water Chiller connected. All of that comes in this nice wooden shipping crate, very sturdy, and there's plenty of foam packaging to make sure that the machine arrives safely. Before we dive inside of the machine, there's a lot of cool things on the outside, starting with this removable crumb tray. This is an all steel construction. On the side, there's the main power switch, e-stop button, and USB interface. The back of the machine is pretty straightforward. Power cable going in, auxiliary ground if you're building wiring has some issues, an auxiliary outlet if you're using the included water pump, and of course, the exhaust outlet. And lastly, the water inlet and outlet. This side has a nice clean layout. I'm digging the ribbed siding that matches the other side with the power switch, e-stop button, and the USB port. And the top of the Reno is finished off with a nice glossy heavy tint acrylic. And saving the best for last is the fully featured control display with a color LCD screen. I definitely love the sleek modern look of the Reno Pro. Next up, it's time to check out the inside of the machine. This is going to be a steel honeycomb, which I love because my magnets stick to it, helping me keep work firmly planted while making a project. The rest of the interior construction of the Reno machine is going to be aluminum with a mix of steel subframing with it. All metal parts making up the framework of the Reno. Movement of the laser head is guided on linear rails on both the X axes and the Y axes. The laser head has a lot of really cool features on it. We'll start out with the air assist nozzle. 
This machine also does have the included air assist pump. Right next to that, this red doodad. This is the red magnetic focusing gauge. I've tested this out off camera and it is very, very simple, but very, very accurate. And neatly tucked away on the back side of the laser out of our view is a red dot light to help us know where the laser is pointed at. The Reno machine is going to use common standard sizes for both the mirrors and the focusing lens. Let's check out two things at once. We'll look at the red magnetic focusing gauge while I adjust the knob for the tool bed height. To adjust that knob, here's that tool that's included with the machine. And now when I rotate this, I can move the table up or down. In this case, I'm moving it up. I'm going to make sure that the plunger on the focusing gauge is down and all I do is move the table up until that pops all the way up and now it's set in perfect focus. This focusing gauge it's really a game changer. It's so easy to use and it's very repeatable and it's very accurate. It takes all the guesswork out of setting the focus down to my work material. There's definitely a lot more things I could take a look at on the exterior of the machine and the interior, but I want to keep this first look of the Reno Pro video a little bit short. One of the things I really glossed over is the controller display. I looked at this last night and this little display, don't let the size fool you. There is so much stuff in here. I'll be making an entire separate video just on this controller display because there's just a lot of cool things packed into that. Next though, I'm gonna connect the computer up to the machine and we're gonna see the machine running just a, a fun little project to see the machine in action and what the engraving and cutting looks like. Put that on an engraving layer and I'm gonna cut that out. So we'll check out engraving and cutting, move over to cuts and layers. And I'm gonna run at a speed of 500 millimeters per second. And I'm gonna change the power level to 35%. And for this line that I'm going to cut out, line speed of 20 millimeters per second, I'm gonna bump the power level up to 50%. And let's do two passes of that. We'll see if that cuts it through. I think I like that position. I'll hit the frame button, make sure we're always over the work material. That looks good. I'll get the water chiller turned on and the exhaust and we're ready to go. Let's check this out. That took no time at all. I'm wondering though if I was a little too aggressive with my cut speeds and yeah, that didn't drop right out. It did leave a nice line around on the backside, but again, I was only running at 50% in two passes, clipping along pretty fast. So here's a nice close up of that. And I've got a nice depth on the engraving, even though I'm running 500 millimeters per second. So it's a nice feel to it and it's still pretty clean. I didn't sand or clean any of this up. I am gonna chuck this back up inside of the machine. I'm just gonna cut a little shape off to the side here because I do wanna show that the machine can cut very quickly and very cleanly. We'll change this down to 18 millimeters per second and we'll launch it one more time. Yep, there we go. Pops right out that time. Nice clean cut. I'll have a link to both machines in the video description. I'll even toss in a discount code for you. I think that's going to be good for 8% or even 10% off on the machine or basically anything across the Monport website. If you have a question about this, let me know down below. I think that wraps it up for this video. And don't forget to give this video a like and until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.